Hello and welcome back to Stationers. My name is Bigfoot. Today we're taking a look at the air conditioner. Um, this is the second version of this, um, as I forgot several important pieces um, in the previous video, so here we go. Alright, so in Stationers there are several options of cooling your base. Um, the first and easiest one, especially here on Mars, is just to set up something simple like this. Outside of the base you would have some radiators, you'd have uh, a pipe with a valve um, that you'd open and close as you needed some cooling and then on the inside of the base you would have some um, some other radiators to absorb that heat and then these ones would reduce it uh, then you could just fill that um, pipe with an active vent and be done um, another option that you could do uh, would be to have the active vent on there with a passive vent outside um, so that when you turn on the active vent it would just have a blow through type method um, and then on the inside you would have the radiators you wouldn't have to worry about the condensation. So this particular setup um, does pose a risk of having um, the gas in there liquefy, uh, which will cause damage to the pipes. So you could just pop the liquid drain on there and if anything liquefies, then it'll just be vented out. All right, so as far as the electronic devices that we have in the game, um, the first cooling device we have is the Humble Wall Cooler. Um, it is easy cooling, but it is, it is, it is trash. Um, here on Mars it works well, on the hotter planets it just doesn't work at all so it's not even an option there. A um, couple of caveats with this guy is that you do need the room pressure around it to be above I believe 7 kilopascals um, or 10, somewhere in that range. The pipe has to have um, I think 100 kPa of pressure in it in order for it to function. The temperature difference between the outside and the inside can't be greater than 100 C, otherwise it won't function. Um, and when it is functioning, it can use up to 1010 watts of power, so it is very power hungry, and it just does not produce a whole lot of cooling. So that leaves us with the regular air conditioner. The conditioner works as you can find it in the atmospherics kit, um, but it takes gas from the input side, and it takes energy from the input gas, puts it into the waste pipe, which the waste pipe will need to be taken outside into some kind of a radiator array to, uh, to get rid of the heat, and then the resulting cooler gas is uh, put out of the output pipe. Uh, that happens when it's in cooling mode. The other mode that it has, which it does automatically between cooling and heating, is in heating mode. It takes the gas from the input and it draws energy from the waste pipe, puts it into the input gas, and then outputs the gas that is higher. Now, it does that automatically, so whatever this is set on, if the uh, room temperature in here was, say, minus 39 degrees, then it's going to try and pull energy from here to get to 20. Once it reaches its target point, or within uh, a degree or two of it, um, the AC will actually stop moving gas, so you need to keep that in mind if you were to have these guys run in series or something, um, it will stop pumping gas. Taking a look at the air conditioner, we have a few different efficiencies that we need to pay attention to. Uh, we have the operational temperature efficiency, the temperature differential efficiency, and the pressure efficiency. The pressure efficiency is based on the input pressure and the output pressure. The temperature differential uh, efficiency is the temperature differential between the input and the waste pipe. And the operational temperature efficiency is checking to see if the input gas is way too cold or way too hot. If you need to remember what those items are, you can just check out the air conditioner stationpedia page by hitting F1. And it talks about in the multiple, multiple efficiency multipliers paragraph here of what each of those does. A gas that I recommend using in your AC setup is going to be nitrogen. Um, the reason for that is nitrogen gives us the most temperature operational range. It also has a low uh, specific heat and it has a low molar mass, meaning that it is able to exchange heat rather quickly. Um, you want to use an, a gas with a low specific heat. In this case it's 20.6 joules. Specific heat is 
defined basically as a measure of how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of a substance by a certain amount, or more specifically, how much energy it takes to raise the substance by one degree in Celsius or Kelvin. Um, so having this as a low number means that it's going to exchange that energy rather quickly. Whereas volatiles is slightly better, the temperature range um, that we can operate before it liquefies is a lot less than nitrogen. If we compare that to nitrogen, so you can see that the, the ring is captured on the, um, the volatiles line, so we can get a lot colder with the nitrogen. Water has a, a really high heat capacity, or specific heat, uh, which means that it takes a lot of energy to to cool it down or to heat it up, meaning that it is a good thermal battery, um, but when in an AC environment, uh, we don't want to use that. It also would um, liquefy at a relatively uh, higher temperature, and um, then you're going to break your pipes. So uh, that's why I recommend using nitrogen. Um, as far as filling the pipe with nitrogen, I recommend using a filtration unit uh, with some nitrogen filters and some source of gas. Um, another option would be to use a um, pure tank of nitrogen that you have from, say, a lander. Some of the starts give you a nitrogen tank. And then one last thing to keep in mind when you have an AC, um, a single AC setup like this is that the max temperature difference that you would really ever see theoretically uh, would be about a 55 degrees C difference between the input and uh, the output. Uh, this particular setup, the way I have this setup right now with these two vents right here, this is a very inefficient setup. Um, the air conditioner is not able to get enough gas through this one vent uh, in order to, to have any meaningful difference, which is why this room, um, it, it can't even keep up with this room. Um, so in order to fix that, you would need to extend this out into some kind of a, a room atmospherics uh, system such as that. You disconnect that pipe right in there and then this would be much more efficient uh, the output vent in this case wouldn't um, really have much of an effect but basically you can connect the output to the input and then up to your room atmospherics so based on those principles let's take a look at this guy setup over here so this is um, for those of you that followed my venus setup this is the spaghetti monster uh, that we created on venus but just more laid out so it's a lot easier to see um, personally, I like the look of the spaghetti monster, and we'll take a look at him in a little bit. Um, so here we have an AC pair. So this AC is set to basically cool down as much as it possibly can, and this one is set to heat as much as it possibly can. Again, we filled the system with about one megapascal of nitrogen. Um, the reason for the one megapascal is if you go too much nitrogen, then it just doesn't cool down uh, quite as much, so the lower pressure it's able to, to um, affect the change a lot better. Um, so you can see our efficiencies are actually pretty good. Our pressure efficiency is good. Temperature is, um, is good. Um, the operational temperature efficiency is a little bit lower on this one because of the input is actually a little bit higher than the output. I'll show you that in a second. And over here, it's the same thing. Um, the reason for the valves, the valve acts as a choke point. These, uh, valves, um, they don't allow the full amount of flow through it. So this, uh, basically we'll have less pressure in this pipe uh, which you can see is basically none uh, because the AC is sucking it all up every single game tick uh, compared to this pipe here. So on this side we have 182C on this side we are down to minus 86C and these two AC pairs is all that you need to get down from uh, Venus temperature which is about 470C to something that's um, that's livable uh, the other option that you could do would be to connect th this waste port to another AC input and output and step down 55 degrees, but I find this setup to be a lot more power efficient and um, gets the job done a lot better. So the way this works is that um, in cooling mode, which this one is doing, it is basically taking a little bit of the input gas it is trying to remove as much energy as it possibly can from that gas and put it back into the waste pipe. So this side remains hot. We uh, The resulting gas is a little bit cooler in this side. 
And then in heating mode, it takes energy from the waste pipe and puts it into the gas. So the result is our gas that we have connected uh, to the input is uh, getting even colder. And then the heat is obviously being over here. Uh, this guy we would heat uh, connect to some kind of a heat exchanger. You could connect it to some kind of phase change AC, um, a large thermal bank um, that you have set up, or some other way of, of removing the heat from the system and dealing with that uh, in another system. On the cold side, um, you would put some kind of a, a digital valve in here that can be controlled by logic. And um, when you open it, it would uh, put cool gas into the heat exchanger, which would then exchange heat with the room. Um, each one of these vents would then be exchanging heat and whatnot with the pipe. Um, heat exchangers do not cross the gas that's in it. So this will always be 100% pure nitrogen and this would be your room atmosphere gas. Um, so you would just turn that on logically with a, a sensor and um, and then you would be able to control your room temperature just fine. All right. So one way that you could actually improve this particular setup would be to have a chip in here and um, a volume pump and an analyzer here. Uh, you would set the pump to basically use a, a PID controller to only input enough gas into this pipe that the AC can consume per tick to make the pressure efficiency be 100%. Um, you don't want it to be any more than 100%. You don't want it to be any less than 100%. Um, you just want it to have just enough gas to meet the 100% requirement, and that's it. Um, and that will give you the most, uh, most temperature change there. All right, well, let's hop on over to Venus and check out the actual spaghetti monster. Um, this guy is nice, but it's really uh, kind of drawn out, it takes up a lot of room, and uh, I like the more compact look of it. Alright, so this guy is another version of that AC that we just saw. Um, again, we have the one that's heating to um, be as hot as possible, and the other one that is cooling down as much as it can. Um, this AC I did uh, overfill a little bit. Um, not a whole lot. But uh, as you can see, the side is 33. Now this uh, side is actively cooling down the rest of the base, um, all of my atmospherics. Uh, again, this is on Venus, and then the outside temperature is uh, 460 C, so it's keeping up quite nicely. Um, but everything is still very hot in this base, so it is um, taking a minute to cool down. Let's take a look at the spaghetti monster. So again, this AC is um, heating as much as it can, this one is cooling as much as it can, and this is a very compact design of that. Uh, so you can see that you can make it very, very small. Um, obviously you could expand and have multiple pairs uh, affecting the same gas pipes to get it, you know, even cooler. Um, but yeah, so that's AC. Uh, in a nutshell, um, hope it helps, hope it answers some questions about the Mysterious AC box. Uh, they are fairly easy to use. I just recommend using the, um, the insulated pipes on the outputs. Um, if you're using regular pipes, they're going to heat up. The regular pipes are going to convect a lot of heat back into the hab. So you want to use insulated pipes to do that. Um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask over on Discord, and uh, the great community over there will be happy to help you out. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for joining me today.